Thanks, Megan. Um, as Megan stated, my name is Michelle Zelk. I am a senior informatics consultant at, who specializes in program and project leadership. Um, I've been doing this for about the last 15 years, working as a project leader in the lab informatics space, and I have expertise in lots of different industries, including pharmaceutical, um, consumer products, oil and gas and others. Um, over the years, I've worked with many informatic systems, including LIMS, electronic notebook implementations, um, chromatography data systems implementations, instrument integrations, um, just to name a few. And on top of all of that, I am a certified Lean Six Sigma black belt. So that's who I am. So what's this all about today? So um, what is it that we're looking to accomplish? Well, the whole purpose of this webinar is to, to show you how you can make change, change management really work for you rather than just being some abstract concept that you see floating around every once in a while in, in the change management space. Um, so here's a list of goals that for the next hour. Um, first off, I'll walk you through the difference between just implementing a technical solution and achieving the full business, business benefits. Um, next, we'll talk about how, I'm sorry, we'll talk about the differences in how various people and groups perceive change and how a great change manager can shape that perception. We'll explore how change management works together with the technical activities of a project and see how change management can enhance the, the technical side of, of the work as well. Then we'll dive into the nuts and bolts of change management and what it looks like in real projects with the implementation of process and tools and techniques that are part of change management. Then we'll pull it all together and show you how to get from the current state of IT projects to more of a realization state where business values improved, stakeholders are happy, and users um, easily adopt your solution. Okay, so maybe it won't be quite that easy, but but we'll give you some tips and tricks here. So normally in the world of IT projects, which includes lab informatics projects, of course, um, we've got several different misconceptions that are common. You usually see them across the board. Uh, the first one, um, project managers are usually focused on that triple constraint. We've all heard about that. The time, scope, cost. And as long as you keep all three of the legs in, the, in that triangle balanced, you win. Um, I'll show you as we move along that this isn't really enough to reach the return on investment that the guys upstairs are expecting you to, to see. Um, the next misconception, just meeting the technical requirements of an implementation guarantees that users will be excited. I mean, if we give them what they want, they should love it, right? Not necessarily. Um, requirements don't equal expectations. We'll take a look about how to manage expectations across all stakeholders groups to be sure the project is viewed as a success, even by the end stakeholders. Third misconception, um, 
User input after collecting requirements really isn't necessary. So those of us in the IT world know that once you've collected requirements, the tendency is to kind of go back to your cave. You've got the requirements all documented, and then we kind of go back to our cave and build the solution. We'll cover some things that show you that that is probably not the way to work it. Um, it's best to keep the user community involved for the length of the project and engaging them often. So along with those misconceptions, um, why do laboratory information products fail? I mean, everybody in the IT world has heard that IT projects are notoriously high failure rates. I think from my experience, um, lab informatics projects may even be a little bit higher of a failure rate than just normal IT projects. And why is that? Well, af after years of experience and um, with research backing this up, it really comes down to human factors, the people piece of the project, it, not the technological piece. The technological pieces are usually fairly straightforward. Those are implemented correctly a lot of times, but the reason for the failure is that the users don't adopt them. So some of the keys that play into that are just a lack of user involvement, as we talked about on the last slide. It's best to keep your users involved all during the development and build process. Um, if that's not happening, that can certainly impact whether a project is successful. You want to um, build buy-in. 